This is Eric Likes Animals, and on today's show, we are going to be talking about Bruno. Welcome to Eric Likes Animals. I'm your host, Eric Mahan. I hope everyone is doing well out there, staying healthy, and not getting too bummed out by all the cold weather and snow it seems like uh, we're having across the country right now. I also hope that you guys immediately have noticed a difference in the podcast. Um, I have really tried to sit down and learn a little bit more about how to use my mic better and how to use the software better. I definitely think that this sound quality in this episode is a lot better than my first one. I hope you guys agree as well. I definitely didn't learn as much as I should for the first episode, but also I'm somebody that if I start learning too much about something as honestly diverse as doing a podcast and learning all the mic stuff, I'm somebody that I start kind of going into it and I get a little nervous or I start working on it and I keep pushing it off and pushing it off because I don't feel like I know everything. So I really wanted to do this podcast. So I kind of decided, you know what, there's no way I'm going to learn all of it. And I always learn a lot better just kind of going with the flow. So hence this podcast is probably going to be a little weird at the beginning, but hopefully each episode it will get better and better for all of you. Although I guess as long as it's not getting worse, I'm doing something okay then. So enough chit chat. I guess we might as well work our way into the species that I'm going to be talking about in today's show. Uh, Like I promised, today we were going to be talking about Bruno. Now, this Bruno is not something that can see into the future or have a whole family of also magical family members who also surprisingly have amazing singing voices as well. Uh, But today's Bruno is actually going to be all about the Bruno's cask-headed frog. The Bruno's cask-headed frog already has a lot of cool points going for it, just simply being a frog. Number one is that frogs actually use their eyeballs to swallow their prey. When you have no teeth like most frogs do, they need something to move their food items from their mouth to their stomach especially because most of the items that they eat are actually still alive since, well, like I said, they don't have any teeth, so they can't really chew it before eating. So what happens is they grab onto prey, they kind of use their hands to kind of push it to the back, and then you'll notice a lot of times that frogs will kind of start squinting a lot when they're eating, and that's actually them kind of putting their eyeballs kind of back into their heads and using them to push the prey from the throat to the belly. Kind of gross, I know, but also awesome. The other thing that these guys can do is these guys are a type of tree frog. So yes, they can climb pretty much anything, even glass. They have those cool little suction cup toe pads that make them be able to climb on almost anything, which is really helpful since these guys are from Brazil. They're down in the tropics and the rainforest, the subtropics, marshes, shrubland, uh, pretty close to the Atlantic Ocean. However, that's not the main reasons why I chose the Bruno's cast-headed frog today. There is a much, much cooler reason, and there's only one other frog that can share this very cool fact. However, I think the best way to tell you guys about this is a little story. And this story is about a researcher named Carlos. Carlos was part of a research team that was studying new frog species and previously identified species within the Brazilian rainforest near the Atlantic Ocean. One of his many job duties was to go out and help collect new species for them to help identify and research on. While out on one of the collecting trips, he picked up a very unique frog that then proceeded to headbutt him while he was holding it. Within minutes, Carlos's hand felt like it was on fire. That pain kind of slowly went up his arm, and unfortunately for Carlos, he was hours away from any sort of medical services. So unfortunately for Carlos, that means he had to toughen it out. For five hours, Carlos was in agony from the pain that this frog caused, which was very curious since most frogs, you would have to ingest or somehow get it within a cut on your hand for any sort of toxins or poisons to take effect. This and many other species of frogs were then brought back to laboratories and studied. Turns out the frog that headbutted Carlos was one of two species uniquely identified on this trip. The one that actually hit Carlos was called the Greening's frog. 
The Greening's frog was officially the first venomous frog. The Greening's frog was actually two times more potent than a local venomous snake found in the region, the fur de lance. Thankfully to Carlos, however, he was not actually hit by our species of the day, the Bruno's cask-headed frog. And that is because the Bruno's cask-headed frog is actually 25 times more potent than the fur de lance. When researchers looked at the venom from the Bruno's cask-headed frog, they realized that one gram of the venom could actually kill 80 adult humans, or in other terms, 300,000 mice, making the Bruno's cask-headed frog not only just the second venomous frog ever discovered, but the most dangerous. Which real quick leads us to a quick segue. Because many of you are probably thinking, how are there only two venomous frogs? I thought there were tons of deadly frogs out there, like poison dart frogs. How can there be only two venomous frogs if there are literally hundreds and hundreds of different species of poison dart frogs, many of which are just as toxic as the so-called Bruno's cask-headed frog? And that's because the Bruno's cask-headed frog is venomous and not poisonous. And yes, there is a difference. Now, unfortunately, on TV, people and experts get it wrong all the time, but I can't be too mad at them because, honestly, with a quick slip of the tongue, I mess it up all the time talking to guests as well. But I try and correct myself. And I do think it's important for you guys to understand the difference as well, real quick. So poison is something that, like the poison dart frog, it would have to be ingested, or poison ivy, where it has to be tactile, or poisonous gas, which is breathed in. However, venom is something that has to be injected into you. For example, when a rattlesnake bites something, it is injecting the venom through its fangs. So that's kind of the big difference between poison and venom. Now, most frogs are poisonous. Some are deadly. Some it's more bad taste. And most snakes are venomous. But it's the outliers in these groups where it gets really weird and really cool, such as the Bruno's cask-headed frog. Because if you remember, when we go back to our story, they talk about how this frog headbutted Carlos's hand. Not that it bit Carlos's hand, but it headbutted his hand to get that reaction. Now, if you look at the actual name for the Bruno's cask headed frog, you might be wondering what the heck is cask all about. Cask is a term that a lot of people use to describe helmeted. Now, there's a lot of other tree frogs out there that have the word cask and other frog species that have cask as well that aren't venomous. And they normally have kind of these big bony uh, extrusions on them that kind of give them weird helmet looking heads. Now, when you look at the Bruno's cask headed frog, he does have a pretty weird head. It's kind of shovel looking and actually a little bit elongated. But with a quick glance, there doesn't look to be any sort of helmet to him at quick glance. That's because when researchers brought these frogs back and actually did x-rays and studied the skulls of the Bruno's cast-headed frog, they actually noticed a ton of little tiny needle-like spikes coming up from around its head and especially near the upper lip area of the frog. And I will admit, looking at these x-rays that are online from the initial research of uh, the Greening's frog and the Bruno's cask-headed frog, it's a little bit creepy looking because you have a normal frog head and then it looks like a ton of little needles are just coming straight out of its skull. But these are the little spikes that I was talking about. A little creepy looking, but really cool to check out. Now, it works kind of like venomous snakes where they have a venom gland and then that gland kind of helps supply the venom to all the little spikes. And because of how many little spikes, that's kind of the reason why they're thinking that the Greening's frog, even though it was two times more potent than the Furter Lance, why Carlos got away scot-free in this incident. Because there's just so many different spines that this venom has to supply, it can't use too much volume of the venom on any one location, unlike a venomous snake that has two fangs and when it goes in, depending on the situation, could easily supply a decent volume of venom. Though the Bruno's cask-headed frog doesn't have fangs, it does have other attributes besides its little spines and elongated head to help envenomate any potential predators that might prey upon it, but it also has a very flexible neck compared to most frogs. This is also seen with the Greening's frog as well, thus leading to researchers believing that this is an attribute to, well, help them reach around and hit whatever 
animal is potentially trying to prey upon them. These attributes seen in the Bruno's cast-headed frog are also helping that same research team possibly identify new potential venomous frogs that we still don't know too much about. Based on the different attributes that help supply these guys with venom and how it works, they think they've identified other species that could potentially be venomous as well. But for the time being, the Bruno's cast-headed frog stands as number one in terms of the most venomous frog in the world. And that is the story of the Bruno's cast-headed frog and why it's so cool to talk about Bruno. All right, phew, episode two done. Hopefully you guys enjoyed hearing about the Bruno's cast-headed frog. Uh, right now, the podcast is available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, so please become a listener and leave a comment behind. All that information can help me tailor new episodes and also figure out what else I can do to make it more enjoyable. But thank you guys for listening and see you guys next time.